Hello guys, how are you doing? You have been asking me to make videos that would help you settle in Canada in the initial days of your immigration. So this is Dreamland Canada, a video series that would enable you to know the minute details of life in Canada. They will guide you to make a buttery smooth transition from your home country to your dreamland. I would be providing you all the relevant information about living in Canada so that you don't face any difficulty while immigrating to your dreamland. In this video, I'll tell you how to find a temporary accommodation when you first arrive in Canada. I'll tell you about different websites and also give you some tips around it. So if you're interested, stay tuned. I would keep bringing videos like this regularly. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it right now. And now you can follow me on Instagram as well. My Insta handle is dreamabroad.mylife. After we get the Canadian PR, it is followed by celebration. And why not? You have did so much hard work to get the Canadian permanent residence. But this celebration is short-lived because it is followed by little worries. Worries like, how will we get a job over there now? Worries like, how will we be able to get an accommodation in Canada? So don't worry about it anymore because We'll talk about how to get a job in a different video in some other day. But today we will talk about how to get an accommodation and primarily a temporary accommodation. Because first of all, you'd go there, you'd get a temporary accommodation and then you would move to a permanent one. That's the recommended way. All right. So now let me give you an example. So let's suppose that you're moving to Toronto area. So the Toronto area is basically covered by some cities and they're all combined to know as the Greater Toronto area or the GTA region. Now the city of Toronto is actually very expensive. So probably you would you know get a home somewhere in the GTA region. So let's suppose that you get your permanent accommodation in Oxbridge and because I'm saying a permanent accommodation which means it would be a one year lease but after settling over there you find a job which is in Mississauga now just Oxbridge and Mississauga you can check out the uh, distance and because you'd be no new over there without license you won't be able to get a car so with the local transport it would take you something like uh, two to two and a half hours which means five hours of uh, transportation daily which is definitely not recommended, right? So what should you do in such a case? So ideally you should get a te temporary accommodation for a few days and then after that when you get to know the city, after that you can move to a permanent accommodation, uh, probably depending on your job or a few other factors. Okay, now we will talk in detail about looking for a temporary accommodation. We will talk about different factors, how you can look for a temporary accommodation but before that let's talk about the duration, the location, the price, the amenities, all those details. So the duration. It should be something like uh, you know two to three weeks at a minimum and if you can get it for you know one to two months that's pretty better. For location if you can you can get it in the city of Toronto if possible. You can get in the downtown Toronto because because then it will be pretty easier for you to commute to uh, different parts of the GTA region. This was about Toronto, so all the cities majorly have a city center or downtown. So it's better to get a temporary accommodation first in the downtown. However, it would be a bit expensive, but still fine because it's just for a few weeks or maybe a couple of months. Now the price. It definitely depends from one person to the other but if you get a temporary accommodation it would definitely be a bit on the costlier side from the permanent accommodation so don't worry about it in the first few days you would you should spend time to know the city to know the place where we are going to stay for long now the amenities okay you should make sure that the place which you're getting is actually fully furnished because of course when you're moving from your home country to a new place you won't be able to you know move a lot many things because you're allowed to carry only two piece of luggages right so 
that probably would have you know some uh, very basic things and your clothes and things like that so of course you should get a place which is fully furnished so that you don't face many difficulties in the early days and, and when you get the permanent accommodation after that you can definitely go ahead to you know get a new couches uh, maybe some new um, electronics new tv or different things like that okay now let's see how you can go on to find the temporary accommodation there are a few different websites through which you can find it let's talk about some of them one by one All right so the very first website is airbnb.com so this is the website very famous one uh, you can go over here and just in case let's say you want to check uh, the homes in Toronto for, uh, for the week of May so they've got it uh, over here listed quite well in detail the good thing with these websites is that uh, they own the responsibility of your money so it doesn't go in any wrong hands so you won't get cheated over here so probably let's say uh, is the average monthly monthly price let's say you wanna spend something like seventeen hundred dollars for uh, for one month so in that case you'll get you know different uh, options for it you can look over it uh, if you want you know it's definitely beneficial to have a kitchen over there as well with some uh, basic kitchenettes some utensils so all of these things definitely help you can go over here and check for different options you can see there are different options uh, for uh, different kind of people I mean if you want to spend more there will be you know many more options as well I'm sure but uh, put the filter over here which is uh, around seventeen eighty hundred dollars which means that the daily rent will be something around sixty dollars uh, that is the Canadian dollars I'm talking about here so uh, you can look for these options this will be very beneficial for you the other website is homeaway.ca uh, if you want you know probably if you want to look something in Vancouver let's say so you can check out uh, let's say for any example if you're a single guy you know probably it would be easier for you because you'll get many more options but if you're a family if uh, you're coming with your kid over here in that case uh, you have to look for different options because uh, some in some places they do have you know limitations that in this place only two people can live in this place uh, you know one kid and one uh, you know and one couple is allowed so these these kind of things uh, do happen over here as well so probably if you wanna see something like you know in one fifty dollar if you wanna go higher up to that range so definitely you'll find uh, different options and these will all be um, fully furnished homes and they'll probably come with the uh, kitchenettes as well so it's very difficult for people to eat you know every day outside for regularly for one month so obviously you can bring home uh, some uh, of the uh, food and you can cook it over there so this is another website uh, homeaway.ca the third website is verbo.ca vrbo.com sorry and this is also part of a home away family so probably more or less you'll get a similar kind of uh, options in here as well because I suppose that they'll have the same database so uh, these were the uh, you know top websites apart from this is this Kijiji which is very very famous in Canada and especially in Toronto you'll find you know different kind of options for short term rentals so let's say that uh, over here you book an apartment for one month after that uh, you know you're still struggling to get a job and you want to get a short term rental for two or three months that after you finalize your job you can move to your permanent residence close to your uh, office in that case then you can find uh, you know temporary residence number two in uh, in Kijiji because here you'll find many options for sublease and different other kinds of options as well the thing over here is that you need to pay directly to uh, the owner or the rental agency now if you're paying something to the owner you're not very sure that uh, if the money is going in the right hands if it's a scam or not so I would suggest that uh, don't go with Kijiji for the very first temporary accommodation when you're living there in your home country and you're booking the uh, place just when you for the first temporary accommodation in Canada don't go for Kijiji straight away probably book something from a more trusted source which is uh, Airbnb or maybe HomeAway or Verbo.com something like that and then after that when you're over here when you know the place you can definitely go for a Kijiji you can 
actually visit the place uh, which all places are listed over here you can go there you can visit the place you can check out if it is fine or not if it is uh, authentic or not and then you can pay uh, to the home owner so this way it would be quite helpful for you I would suggest go for those places which have kitchens in them so in that case uh, even if it's a shared kitchen if and if you are a single guy I think uh, to save money it could be fine for many people so you can go for that and there'll be different options ranging from uh, $30 even it might go up to $200 or $300 so that depends on from person to person but definitely you'll get different options on these websites so thank you guys for watching this video I hope the information shared in this video would be helpful for you guys if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please subscribe it right now